we got into power, I mean water a little bit. Different people I've talked to uh, have asked a few questions about it, but the water situation starts with uh, the sky. So you're, you're looking at what falls from the sky rather than taking it out of the aquifers. Uh, the, and that also means rain and snow melt. Uh, we got into a little bit of discussion on why the roof is sloped the way it is due to, uh, like we first, we were first doing the roofs, just to review a little bit, sloping south uh, to get this, to collect the sun to, to melt the snow, and then got into the fact that that makes more details and now we're doing this. So you'll see the, the building next door, the education facility, and the one they call Corner Cottage, has this configuration, which works great. It's just more expensive than this. So we're obviously headed for, you know, making things more economical. And uh, so this is where we're at now with our skylights and our battery box and everything out here in the front. And we just have a very simple roof overhanging, dropping into cisterns, thermal wrap, and uh, tire wall. So, uh, <clears throat> looking at the roof first, it starts with uh, the roofing material. And I mentioned yesterday to look at this roof, which uh, was the bry material, with it, and it it started deteriorating and needing its acrylic coating every few years, so we went ahead and spray foamed it, which is not bad. Uh, you have to put acrylic coating on it, but uh, a lot of places around the world don't have the spray foam coating. We're looking at trying to come up with a universal design that has basic uh, qualities that can be used around the world. So uh, we went next door, uh, this was the first building we built out here. Next door, we went to just uh, a material called EPDM rubber. It lasts for 10 or so years. You can see by it next door that it's going to need maintenance soon. And then the next building over is when we started going to metal, and I got into the fact that metal does uh, create issues because of the detailing, especially with the kick-up. So this this configuration of roof was aimed at getting metal, which is very subtle and, and it collects even moisture in the cisterns. We've seen it dripping from just dew and uh, collects clean water. It's a very simple lifetime roof. Uh, you can't really go wrong, so we were into making some design sacrifices. It turned out they weren't sacrifices because now we heat this thing and melt the snow from underneath and it's the same difference, just a lot cheaper. So the roof is the beginning, and if you're going to do catch water, and you, water's a big issue these days, so uh, you should, uh, you're looking for, in my opinion, after all the years we've been fooling with it, you're looking for a metal roof, uh, and a metal roof that if you are in a climate where it does freeze, then you're looking for heating it. Uh, with the solar panels that we put up here that also double as hot water heating. And we just pipe some of it through underneath the roof to melt. And you can get a, a glimpse of that system at the, uh, uh, the latest one called Sutton that Kirsten's gonna take you to. You can look out on the edge, you can see these pipes. There's a gutter back here. Uh, you can see the solar collectors up here. Back in the back there's pump, there's a closet where you can see the pump and the and the, and the tank that stores the hot water and so on. So that's the beginning of harvesting water is, is a roof surface. The, the uh, square footage of the roof is relative to, you, you do the square footage of the roof, uh, I won't do all the math right now, but basically you can do the square footage of your roof and Every, then that would be also how many cubic feet your roof would be if you had uh, 12 inches of precipitation a year. There's seven gallons in a cubic foot, 
So you can then get how many gallons of water for every inch of rain or every 12 inches of rain your roof can collect. Then you can take your uh, annual rainfall and ours, you could say ours is eight here. It's really probably seven here on the Mesa, but call it eight. That would be 0.66 of a cubic foot. There's seven gallons in a cubic foot and do the math and you can find out how many gallons of water a year you can collect. Then you can size your cisterns accordingly. And then due to the fact that this water system uh, uses the water four times, uh, you, in a normal household, a person, the, way, the calculations from, uh, say, the state engineer who calculates the water usage of a, a person in an average house, it's something like 96 gallons a day. Uh, because we use the water four times, uh, ours comes out to be 19 per day. And this is, off, this is certified or whatever, uh, endorsed, let's say, by the state engineer of New Mexico. He helped us come up with this figure after he, I went down there to the state engineer's office and I, who handles all the water in the state, controls all the aquifers and everything. And I said, we want to do a catch water system. And he said, this is years ago. And he said, well, that's really cool, but there's just not enough water in this that falls from the sky here to do a catch water system. And I told him what we wanted to do, which was we catch the water in a cistern from the roof and then we use the water say to take a bath then we recollect the water after the gray water planters to flush the toilet that water some indoor plants that's a second use of water flushes the toilet that's a third use of water and then the toilet water goes outside through a conventional septic system and into another rubber line cell which you'll see at the Sutton house because there's one under construction there uh, and that does landscaping. So, see, when you take a shower, that uses, say, five gallons of brand new fresh water. When you water a bunch of indoor plants for food or decor or whatever, that uses another five gallons of fresh water. When you use the toilet, that takes uh, another, used to be five gallons of water. They have low flush toilets now. And then when you landscape outside, again, that's brand new fresh water that a normal household uses. We use that same gallon, same five gallons of water over and over and over and over again, uh, which is how we can come up with this figure. So then you can say 19 gallons a day per person and match that to what you can get on your roof and you'll find that two people living in a normal sized house in an area like this that has seven to eight inches of uh, precipitation a year in liquid uh, will work. And the engin state engineer was super psyched about it because it would cause us to be pumping less water from the aquifers that are waning in New Mexico. So he helped us come up with these figures. And uh, so that's the basis of it right there. Uh, but then the water, you're getting the water on the roof. The next step is uh, you have to get the grasshopper wings and uh, bird shit and whatever else out of it dirt and dust. We, we have silt catches. What, we've gone through all kinds of silt catches. If you look around at the different roofs, you'll see uh, lots of different basins that, that begin to collect the water. It goes through those on its way to the cistern. The one we're at now, this is after, you know, a couple of decades of evolution, is we went online and you can see this at uh, Corner Cottage and uh, I don't think the the Sutton one has it in yet. Corner Cottage is probably the only place we've got this installed because it's rel relatively new. You want something that is going, that water can run in and it's just going to filter it basically. In this climate uh, we don't have a bunch of leaves and, and uh, things like that. You have to get more serious with your clean out if, if you in an area that has a lot of deciduous trees. But here we're just talking about insects and dirt and dust and whatever and uh, pieces of plants or whatever that end up on the roof. What we found is a big stainless steel bowl online and we went and drilled a bunch of holes in it. We fill it full of gravel and we run the scuppers off of the gutter into it. And I think they've even got these installed next door. So definitely go up and walk around the roof next door 
I would say don't walk on the roofs, walk around them to see all of this. So your water uh, at the end of a, uh, of a roof goes into a typical rain gutter. Sometimes we make them bigger if it's more, uh, if there's more precipitation than a regular gutter. And then that goes into scuppers that just take it into the stainless steel bowls, giant bowls, full of gravel. And that's the, bit, that's the first filter. It's just a silt catch. If you are in an area that has a lot of deciduous trees, you put a screen over that that's removable so that the leaves pile up on that and the water goes through. And then you can take the screen off and dump the leaves off. You, you have to, uh, in different climates, deal with uh, the, uh, you know, the situation a little bit different. Basically, you got two points here already. One is uh, the cleanest material that catches the cleanest water uh, and, and low maintenance, and then silt catching to clean up that water. That's the next step. Uh, another thing about metal roofs, there is a brand of metal called ProPanel that's sold throughout the U.S. It is uh, the best one because the baked on enamel coating that they use doesn't have lead in it. Some of the other brands, there's a little bit of lead in their baked on coating and it kind of deteriorates over the years and gets flatter and that deterioration ends up in your water. So you want to, the ProPanel brand we know, you don't really see any ProPanel here that's gone flat. Uh, it's, uh, it holds up better. And uh, another good thing to do is test your water occasionally anyway. We've, we test, the, the, the county used to make us test our water all the time. And one time we tested it with a test of the water at the courthouse, and, which was city water, town water, and ours tested better. Uh, so we aren't getting too much flack about it anymore. They're just thrilled that we're not using the aquifers. Uh, so we have our own water. And you know, like, even if you get uh, to you know, a, a climate that even has six or five inches of rainfall, you can, you can come up with a rationalization like we're doing one in Baja now. And they, they're down there around six or seven. And uh, they're having a bigger family in this building. So what we're doing is we're just extending the roof even more. You know, coming up in there, we're doing little palapas up here that drain onto the roof and whatever. The uh, point being that you can extend your roof surface with the numbers, doing the math, to match the rainfall to give you what you need for a family of two, three, four. And see, usually if you have a house with two people in it, the house is this size. If you have a house with four people living in it, the house is that size. So that increases the roof size, which equates to the increased use of water. And then you determine how many cisterns. Like in a, we're doing, the ones here will put in 6,000 gallons of cisterns, which are, uh, we use 1,500 gallon cisterns. So we use four of them on a typical house. We're doing the same thing in Texas. And they get four, see we get eight inches of precipitation a year here. Texas, where we're going, East Texas, uh, gets four inches a month, three to four inches a month. So one thing we're going to do is tarp the site so we aren't pounding tires in the rain. Uh, pounding tires in the rain, uh, for you guys that pounded tires yesterday, imagine your sledgehammer coming back up with a wad of mud on it like that, you know. It just doesn't go away. We did that in Scotland. And uh, so the... Uh, Four inches a month means, if you do the math on four inches a month, these people are catching enough water for two months every month, according to the usage in one of these houses. So this is taking water out of the uh, equation of, you know, taking from the earth. Because uh, there, there's many places, the aqu they say the aquifers under Santa Fe and Albuquerque are going to be deplete in a few years. They're going to start taking the Rio Grande. We're good on aquifers here, but it's it's... 700 feet down and it takes a lot of energy to pump it up so we don't use it this community has one well that the county made us put in over there and it's for fire you know uh, storage of water for fire and it's just a token thing nobody ever uses it um, the uh, so the, the the story there is that if you get less you know you're heading toward six five four you increase the roof uh, you you, you look at the biggest torrential rain in recorded history, 
and make your roof and your cistern size to stash it. For instance, like uh, Phil, the guy that was pounding tires yesterday, he and I went out a few years back and during a torrential rain, and we saw our roof uh, running into our scupper, and basically we saw our cistern running over because there was too much rain all at once. Well, in this climate, that's a, that's a waste. We immediately made our scuppers and our cisterns bigger on our next design because we don't want to waste a drop of water in this climate. So you want to design your system, and it's, it's all the same components. Some are bigger, some are larger, just like with electricity. Some of the panels are, sometimes you have more panels, sometimes you have more batteries. I'll go into that, but uh, you're, uh, you're looking at designing for the worst torrential rain so that you don't waste a drop of water, unless you're in East Texas, and then you can waste rain. The cisterns all have overflows. So in East Texas, I was just going to put in two cisterns because they're going to get filled up every month anyway. I went ahead and put in four uh, for just to have, you know, the, the, my, my rationale there was uh, that who knows with climate change if they're going to continue getting three or four inches a year, uh, I mean a month. So, uh, but you can, if you've got more rainfall, you can have less cistern and less roof space. And if you have less rainfall, you have more cisterns and more roof space. It's just that simple. We need, we need some masala.